Right then, today we are talking about the MTAR-21 carbine that's being reintroduced into Battlefield 4, as we saw it in Battlefield 3, with the China Rising DLC expansion pack. Now, unfortunately, DICE made a little bit of a boo-boo with this expansion pack. These weapons, of course, are supposed to be with the China Rising expansion pack. But, for PC at least, they unfortunately included all of these assignments in the most recent patch that they put out, which is unfortunate for them, but for me, and for you guys on PC at least, it means we got more weapons to play with. I will be doing a series of videos in the future showing you just how to unlock all of the new weapons from the China Rising DLC, but today I'm just going to focus on the MTAR because it was the first one I managed to unlock. If you guys remember the MTAR from Battlefield 3, this thing has an extremely high rate of fire. In Battlefield 3, 900 rounds per minute. This thing was a close quarters beast. Not much has changed in its transition to Battlefield 4. This thing still absolutely rips people to shreds at close quarters combat. And if you stick a laser sight on there, you don't even need to use the iron sights. Especially when they're only about sort of 10 to 20 meters away, you can easily hit fire kill most of the people that are standing in front of you. Because before they've even pulled the trigger, you've leathered six bullets into their torso. You could almost consider this a hit fire only weapon if you really wanted to. Maps like Operation Locker and the Roofs of Flood Zone are really good locations to use this weapon. And if you've got the right attachments on there, this thing becomes an absolute breeze to use. Make sure, as I've already said, that you've got the laser sight on there if you want to use this thing to its full potential, and then pair that with either an ergo or a vertical grip. Those two grips essentially work exactly the same, and they're designed to work in run and gun situations. Now, with a rate of fire of 900 rounds per minute on the MTAR, that's exactly what you're going to be using this gun for. It's not for accuracy, it's simply there to get the bullets into the body, get the guy down on the floor, and move on to your next target. Keeping on the move with the MTAR is pretty much essential, because you're going through all those rounds so quickly you need to reload quite often. And the reload time on this thing is quite extensive. For a long reload it's 3.3 seconds and for a short reload it's 3 seconds, so there's barely a difference between the two. But each time you need to reload your weapon you need to take cover. Because it takes so long somebody could easily come round the corner and take you out. When I first started using this weapon, I stupidly kept coming out of cover before I'd fully reloaded. Because it takes so long, I've got used to weapons that reload much quicker. This takes a lot longer. So I kept coming out of cover and then eventually just getting shot by the guy that was round the corner. Because my gun wasn't ready to fire yet. Now of course when putting attachments onto a weapon it's all your own choice. I've tried to keep it the best that I can in order to utilise the weapon in those situations where I feel it performs best. But I've also added a suppressor on there and here's why. With the suppressor, it works exactly the same as it did in Battlefield 3. It keeps you off the minimap. In those close quarter situations, there are a lot of little arrows running around on the minimap there. If you can reduce that by one and get yourself moving around the enemy, staying off the minimap all the time, they're less likely to come and flank you. The suppressor also reduces bullet velocity and increases bullet drop. Now that doesn't make too much of a difference in our situation here, because as I say, it's only close quarters battles that we're really interested in with the MTAR. So if you are going to attach a suppressor, please don't go and try and get long and medium range kills with it. It just won't work. I don't have any core stats and figures for the recoil of this weapon yet because it hasn't been produced or it hasn't been extracted from the game files by Simthic and weapon sites like that. However, from personal experience, the horizontal and vertical recoil performs very similar to how it did in Battlefield 3. It just jumps all over the place at medium to long range. You're better off using a weapon like the ACWR for that. It just excels at those longer ranges, whereas the MTAR really do just stick to close quarters combat with this thing. So with all that information in mind, you might be thinking that the MTAR is really only good for sort of close quarter situations, and you'd probably be right unless you've got some really good sort of recoil management capabilities at medium range. But for me, that's a really good thing, because most of the maps that I like playing on, like Zavod 311, Flood Zone and Operation Locker, all have these close quarter situations, so for me, this is probably the best carbine to be using at the moment. If you're more used to the open battlefields, maybe games like Rush, on Golmud Railway, or on Hainan Resort, Conquest Large on that map is brilliant. This probably really isn't the weapon for you, those close quarters battles just don't come along enough, so I'd probably either recommend the AK-5C or the ACWR for those kind of maps. Now just before I sidle off and end this video, I'd just like to announce a giveaway that I'm going to be doing. 
I'm going to be doing it here on YouTube and on Twitter as well to give everyone a fair chance. But I'm going to be giving away six sets of Battlefield 4 physical dog tags. There's now a picture up on the screen of what those look like. They come with a battle pack code as well. There's a gold battle pack that it comes with. These came with the pre-order edition of Battlefield 4 for various consoles and PC versions of the game. And my mate Sam, Bright Vision Videos, managed to get hold of some from his mate who works at a game store. So thank you to him. His link's in the description. He's also going to be running a giveaway, so it's worth going over there and subscribing to him as well. But Westy, how do I win those dog tags I hear you cry? Well, if you want to take part here on YouTube, all you need to do is like the video and then leave a comment. That way I can easily track who's actually taking part and I can give away three of the dog tags here on YouTube. If you want to take part on Twitter as well, you're welcome to do that. All you need to do is follow me at MrProWesty and then you need to tweet hashtag Westy I want your tags. Again, that's really easy for me to track. All I need to do is look at the hashtag on Twitter and I'll see exactly who's been tweeting it. And then I can pick three random winners as well. Both of these contests will be running for 48 hours from the time that this video has been uploaded. So make sure you get your submissions in and then I will be picking a winner at the end of those 48 hours. And one more quick thing, I've been invited by EA to go up to their Guildford headquarters in the UK to go and play the brand new China Rising expansion pack on the Xbox One. I've also been told that I'm able to record the footage and then upload it to YouTube, so expect plenty of China Rising gameplay up on my channel in the next coming week or so. But that is the end of the video guys, thank you for watching, I hope you have enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to leave a like on this video, and as I say, comments are always appreciated, you could win a set of Battlefield 4 dog tags. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.